Okay, in this video I'm just going to do a brief example of sketching a vector field and all a vector field is it basically just assigns to each point in either the plane or three dimensions a an associated vector. So it says let D be a subset on R2 or possibly R3 or R whatever. Um, it says a vector field on R2 or equivalently R3 is going to be a function, it's a vector function that assigns to each point again either XY or equivalently XYZ um, it's going to assign either a two-dimensional vector or equivalently a three-dimensional vector um, and these are very useful in physics um, you know imagine a particle maybe going through a magnetic field um, at you know at different points it's going to feel maybe different forces so you could describe you know maybe the force on that particle as it moves through this magnetic field using a vector field. Okay, so um, kind of a basic example here, nothing too complicated. Kind of a typical typical type of problem that you'll see. Um, so I'm going to sketch the vector field f given by. I should put a little bar over my f here too to emphasize it's a vector function. Um, given by negative y i plus x j will be the formula. So I've got my little x and y axis. I've plotted a bunch of points, uh, you know, kind of arbitrary points, and I've made a little list of all the points. So I'm just plotting points at random, um, just to help me get an idea about what this vector field will look like. So quite a few here. I'll do the couple first couple pretty slowly, and then a little faster. Again, this is something you wouldn't do by hand much for sure. Now you would have a computer, you know, sketch a bunch of these, but just to give you the basic idea. Suppose we want to sketch the vector that's associated with the point 1, 0. Well, if we plug 1, 0 into our formula, uh, notice that the x value goes with the j component and the y value goes with the, um, the i component. So we would get negative 0, i. It looks like to me plus 1, j. And we can simply rewrite that as uh, 0, 1 using our, our little brackets, our vector notation. Likewise, um, I'm going to do maybe the first four real quick. Notice if we plug, well, let's go ahead and do this one real quick. So it says at 1, 0, it says the vector associated with the point 1, 0 is going to be the vector 0, 1. And remember, that means it's just a vector that doesn't move left or right, but just goes up. Um, it points directly upwards and it goes out one unit. So that would be the vector 0 comma 1. Likewise if we find the vector associated with the point 0 1, well again if we plug 0 in for x and 1 in for y, we would get negative 1 i plus 0 j and if we simplify that again, I like to use the little bracket notation, we would get negative 1, comma, 0. So it says at the point 0, 1, it says your vector is pointing one unit to the left, but it doesn't go at all up or down. So my vector at the point 0, 1 would look like this vector. So it would be the vector negative 1, comma, 0. And really, this is all you're doing. You're just plotting a whole lot of points. Um, at negative 1, 0, notice if you plug that in. So if we plug negative in for the x-coordinate, so I'm just going to start using my bracket notation. So if we plug negative 1 in for the x-coordinate, we'll get negative 1j. If we plug 0 in for the y-coordinate, we'll get 0i. And notice this is just going to be a vector pointing one unit down. So let me try not to clutter up my picture here too much. And likewise, we could plug in 0, negative 1. So 0, negative 1, if I plug 0 in for x into my formula, I'll get 0 out for the j component. If I plug negative 1 in for the y component, I'll get negative of negative 1 or positive 1. And that's going to be a vector just pointing one unit um, to the right. So there's a few points associated with um, so a few a few vectors associated with four different points I think you can kinda go back and check if you plug in 3 0 we're gonna get 0 comma 3 if we plug in 0 3 we're gonna get negative 3 
0. If we plug in negative 3, 0, we're going to get 0, comma, negative 3. And if we plug in 0, negative 3, we're going to get 3, comma, 0 as our vectors. So it says at 3, 0, it says you're going to get a vector that's pointing 3 units upwards. So that's supposed to be, it's terrible, it's supposed to be going straight up 3 units. At the point 0, 3, it says it's pointing 3 units to the left and no units, it doesn't move at all up or down. Likewise, at negative 3, 0, we'll be down here, it'll be pointing down. And at 0, negative 3, it'll be pointing um, to the right 3 units. I've got one more little point in there. I plugged in negative 2, 2 just to give me um, one other point. Last but not least, so again, this is very tedious stuff. If you plug negative 2 in for x, we'll get negative uh, 2j. If we plug 2 in for y, we'll also get, um, whoops, this is totally the wrong point. Ugh, terrible. I'm dyslexic here. How about negative 2? Uh, I'm doing the same thing. How about positive 2 comma negative 2? That'll be a little bit better here. Okay, so if we plug in the point 2 comma negative 2. So if we plug negative 2 in um, for the y coordinate, we'll get positive 2i. If we plug 2 in for the x coordinate, we'll get positive 2j. And again, that's a, a vector pointing two units to the right and two units up. So that vector would look something like that. It should be longer. It should be longer than the first set I did, but not as big as the outside ones. I think to me, what's kind of looking like it's going on here. It kind of almost reminds me of maybe like. Uh, you know, maybe this is, it's almost like a vortex or something like that. Maybe you're looking from the top. So the stuff on the inside that's maybe spinning around the origin, it doesn't have to travel quite as fast. If there was, you know, imagine like a solid disk or something of that nature. If uh, the particle is tra traveling on, you know, further out on the disk, obviously the force on it is going to be much higher as it spins around that center. So to me, just kind of a little conceptual link between maybe what this vector field could be useful for. But again, generically, all a vector field is take a point, you've got a formula, calculate the corresponding vector, make a pretty picture, um, and hopefully it'll give you some insight into what's going on. Um, and obviously depends on whatever physical situation you're in. But all right, sorry about my, uh, my, my point being thrown off there at the beginning. Um, silly mistake, but it happens. So if you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to post them.